Hi there, signs of Taurus. This is Kim here to do your reading. Just kind of a general reading. We're going to pull tarot and oracle for you. This fountain has been doing the coolest little bubble thing today. I don't know. I've never seen it do that before. All right. So, Taurus, hope you're doing really well. Like I said, here to connect with your spirit team. Let me focus and breathe into this reading. Hang on one second. Messages for Taurus, please. So this is the Heavenly Bodies Astrology deck. And this deck, it's a good deck, um, might have signs that come out as far as a message, but we're going to be referring to the book because instead of it actually referring to a certain person in your life, it is probably talking about the energy in, in that situation or, or whatever. So I just want to FYI that before we start. And then we're going to clarify. All right. We're going to go step by step, too. I'm not going to do a bunch of cards. We'll just do it one by one so that we get a pretty comprehensive reading today. So, Taurus, house three. This has to do with your house three. So, like I said, I'm going to pull up the book, Heavenly Bodies Astrology. And this is the little guidebook. Okay. House three. Okay, this is about your mentality. It's really about the rational mind too. It's also about development of that. Um, it is. It's reflecting on. Um, says it's the natural home of Gemini. So again, you're going to go towards the energy. Butterfly of the Zodiac. So, the butterfly is known for major change, transformation. Since this is the house three is Mercury ruled, we're going to say that has a lot to do with communication. And it's okay to let your voice be heard here. So, yeah, okay. So, this is nice. And, and it could also have to do with sibling relationships or with relationships within a family structure or, you know, communication to regarding other things that have to do with communication and cooperation. I think it could mean encompassing all of that. All right, I also have coming out house two. Physical security, possessions, material values, and self-worth. Okay, so the thing that's pretty, pretty evident, but let's go ahead and go back to that two because twos are known for being, um, you know, very decisive, big decisions. Like, so I would think that this might have to do with big decisions for you. It also might have to do with taking different sides or opposing views and kind of meeting in the middle. It might be like an X marks the spot. There is um, a very grounded energy here that I'm getting from that house, the second house, your second house. Yeah. Well, and, and so, in that sense, it might have to do with decision making regarding resources and regarding the things that you rely on and, and conserve, right? Your money, possessions, also um, these abilities that, um, yeah, that you can just, you know, practically look at a situation and try to build um, up some kind of material support for yourself, right? And in the book, though, it says you're being reminded that you are enough naked as you came. True, you might want to have some shelter, whether it be a camping, a tent, or whatever it is, have some kind of freaking shelter. It does say engage in extra self-care, and that's wise for anybody to always try 
to do what's best for them, um, food wise, exercise wise, even though it is, um, especially when you're healing, sometimes exercise is, you know, can be not the best, funnest, <laughs> most fun. Let me say most fun thing, but yeah. And of course, consult with your doctor, not just taking advice from anyone. All right. And I have Cairo, or Chiron, sorry, and Pluto. Both of these coming out in the reverse, but okay. So since they're Oracle, we won't read it in the reverse. Um, but yeah, so this is transforming with Pluto. And then this is like I said, with the hurting and healing, it's like there. It's like I said earlier, um, when losing weight, I had to lose weight, get my cholesterol down, and when I did that, they get hurt. The process kind of hurt sometimes, but I knew that if I powered through that, like things would get better. And as the weight came off, that was kind of like the correlation of that. Um, that's what I was meaning by that. So hurt and heal, Chiron. It, it has to do with this energy of. Um, Maybe even strengthening communication or developing new practical methods to assist yourself and others possibly. Definitely transform or be open to some kind of transformation with Pluto energy. Also feeling that, or seeing that butterfly, and of course being reminded of Gemini again. So, I mean, you might have a Gemini in your life because that energy keeps coming up for me to say. Um, okay, so Pluto. Pluto. What would we know about the planet, too? Sometimes it can be cold in the middle, in the midst of a transformation, or it might feel that way. It's about your death and rebirth. Um, it's a spirit of complete transformation. It says it's the realm of death and rebirth here, highlighting broken pieces. Finding strength, finding strength and freedom towards eventual renewal. That's nice. So it, it's kind of reminding me of that ten of swords in reverse energy. So that's that's a good thing. Let's pull um, clarifying cards. Okay, Taurus, let's pull some clarifying cards. And let's let's start with numbers. And then we'll go into the witch's um, oracle. Okay. Okay, what about Pluto? Five fives, 25. Talking about being intelligent. How your uh, endless curiosity here is kind of helping you figure out a variety of subjects. It's like being good at um, a lot of things, not just one thing. Sure house two is your number 23 and that is uh, to me in my readings it has to do with being adventurous and so therefore it, it kind of corresponds with these angel number messages um i feel the same way i feel that um it's like the page of pentacle energy here in order to build some kind of material uh, stability for yourself you have to take some kind of leap of faith or ad be adventurous bold and brave i'm then I have 99, I am courageous. Again, hurt and heal, letting go of the past. And perhaps this energy is amplified at this time since there's two nines. 
unleash your true power here. Unleash your true power of how you hurt but heal. Unleash your true power. All right. And then, oh, quick, that was a nice one. Zero is nice because that has to do with, like, this zero-point energy to me, which means it can be anything. It is kind of like this strong commitment here of infinity. Um, it says there's no beginning, there is no end, all is infinite. Um, it, it does say that you have a really limitless understanding of godly and earthly things. Okie dokie. So... We want the witch's oracle, or do we want to clarify? It gets even more interesting um, when we clarify with the third row and see how they kind of connect together. That is pretty interesting. It's like your tarot unified field. <laughs> All right, Pluto. Starting with Pluto, this change, transformation. And five fives. Whew. Wow. Okay. I have the goddess energy, 36. This is that heaven on earth energy. Um, I'll get the Witch's Oracle book, but that's what it is. Is um, It's number 36. It's about transcending your limits here and having achieved some kind of heaven on earth, which I would think that it's meaning finding um, peace within yourself um, and others. It's all kind of a process, kind of a journey. It says the feminine aspect of the divine, the goddess, uh, is a holy dwelling place for the soul. The mother's embrace can be felt in both heavenly and earthly domains. And the cop, well, okay, I, I cannot pronounce all of that, so I'm not going to even try it. But it, on a high note, it says dreams come true and that you are never alone. And that is a really important message in itself is that you are never alone through anything you're going through. Your spirit team is truly always with you and by your side. Okay, then I have house two. Or 23, the I am adventurous energy. And I'm also seeing the two of swords in this energy here with the goddess and change and transformation. X marks the spot meeting in the middle. Protective. So let's say it's taking a while, okay. Taking a while. The high priest, uh, 14 guardian energy. Let's look this up, which is Oracle. Um, this could be like Hierophant energy. Um, it, it's not just like the Hierophant is not um, just spiritual knowledge about one thing. It's, it's about different areas and different areas. Uh, so it might be about, it might be about guarding, guarding something that has to do with the materials or your wealth. I mean, it might be something like that because I'm feeling like a cryptocurrency for some reason on that. And the Phoenix. Hmm. This is about letting maturity be your guide. It's vibrating on the things that you are consciousness or that your consciousness has a hold of me that you are conscious of. Let me say that right. 
talking about your material stability and the things that is, you know, keeping an eye on it, making sure that it is stable for a long time or as long as you can have it. But then also you've got, you know, self-worth up there, material value, self-worth, possessions. It might be about rearranging, too, of what your list would be now versus, you know, 10 years ago, your goals might have been way different. So that's why it's good to rethink, I would say, your goals and things like that. Uh, pick yourself up and stand true to your higher purpose. Reach for the stars. Um that you have a reason to be confident because there's a reason like you're here as you. There's a role. We're all the actors on the stage, but remember that you're the writer. All right, so Chiron. That's interesting. Okay, so I have um, the Book of Shadows experience here, 41. This has to do with, let me get the book. Wait, I'm pretty sure this has to do with not just your experience, but the experience of people who have maybe passed along things to you, gone before you, have their own experience to give you or wisdom to give to you. Yeah, it's, see, it's the crown chakra. So it, it, in, a, in a way, it's talking to possibly about channeling because of being attached to that crown chakra. All of that might be somehow connected. Chiron... Your book of shadows and or known as a grimoire, I guess. Vibrating on the crown chakra. So this is, yeah, I mean, wherever these messages come from, I think you're the one that would be wise enough to know that. Could be talking about imagination too with the crown chakra. And it says in the book, wisdom from experience is being integrated into your soul. Have no fear. You're returning to your true self. And stronger because Chiron energy here is about coming back stronger, right? Okay, so house three energy, house three energy. The rational mind and communication. Embodiment, the lady. Okay. The lady. In this energy, the lady. Um, this is the embodiment of all of this energy. If it's underneath the zero, it's like um, a zero point. So anything would be possible, like limitless, um, infinite possibilities. Okay, so the witch's oracle. Let me get into the book. Okay, it is the lady archetype. So if it's the lady archetype, then it's meaning the trifecta. It's meaning all three. The maiden, the mother, the crone. It's meaning those three. Um, if it's talking about the divine feminine energy, because there's always a trifecta. There's always ways, which is simply just saying there's ways to describe things differently. But, okay, so this card may say that you might be feeling different lately. Maybe due to communication. It might be through your crown chakra. It might be trying to interpret that. But this is about you and your empowerment. Of course, you see in her hand she has the cup. So that represents what the cup of love 
on the other hand, she has her um, sword, well, represented as a sword, and that it would be the mind, representing the mind and thoughts. And of course, there's the crow. And then, well, that's nice. Whenever you see the bee on these cards, that's a really good thing because the bee is like sweet success, truly. Um, because if you've ever seen bees and the way they work, it's very methodical. Um, says all that you need here is present it's just reminding me of um the teaching of, of all is here for you you know not against you but here to help you if you accept it okay so let's see this will be interesting to see what tarot wants to kind of add to this All right, anything else to add? Okay. Good news on the front here about some of these health matters. Good news. Good information coming back about something good, something good for yourself or someone possibly worried about it. But there, there's clarity and interpretation in something. It might have to do with feeling good and health because of this Queen of Cups energy lady embodiment um or there's something about experience really assisting a transformation that has to do possibly with diet exercise possibly with just finding your truth and clarity in a different whatever situation it is for yourself um the four of pentacle energy it is it's good energy but i'll say it's a little bit guarded the only reason it's guarded though i think is because you having the house two card up there which says that to me the issue would be about some kind of material stability or financial stability uh for yourself and therefore this four of pentacles would be like okay that might be why we're guarded or holding on to something um but the truth and clarity of, of something with health, maybe a clean bill of health, maybe um, truth or clarity regarding good news, and there's that zero. So good news of something new to start, or um, a cycle healed, like a zero, like a cycle of the hurt and heal. So either way, it's all kind of good news. This is not bad that, that if that is necessary, that four of pentacles, then it's okay. Like if, if it's necessary to hold on to something, it's okay. If it's not um, necessary and there's another need that comes before, then I would say, I would say too that it's saying definitely listen yourself, but also be open to others uh, when it comes to advice and opinion. But look at the seeds that you have sown as evidence or proof in your life for yourself and have patience because divine timing is always um unwinding it's always playing out wow we've gotten a long time haven't we let's do one of these um, oracle genetic gifts and then i'll wrap up your reading all right light worker we're gonna end with that that's nice a light worker here is someone who's awakened and they are um, not only can they maybe be a healer of some sorts, they are teachers, they are leaders, they are truth seekers um, in their own right, in their own heart. They are the light workers. That is each and every one of you. So sending you light and love. Bye. -bye.